From Keller Street Cowork, it's Business as Unusual with your host, Danielle Strobel. Ready, set, go. Okay, Barton Smith, here you are, Keller Street Cowork. Talking in the microphone's good too. Is <laughs> unusual. <laughs> He's bullying me. I am bullying that? a little oh bit. Oh my god! Yeah. You can oh point god. it up a little bit, or yeah. we right. can raise that for you if that helps. Can I hold it like this? I always wanted to be on stage and sing like. Uh-oh. <laughs> I was gonna. I, thought I, I know. Gonna, I, thought I was, was gonna come with something like "I love you, Argentina." <laughs> I actually had no idea where it was gonna go, but I was concerned. <laughs> I, was I did like the way she held the mic. I, was, though. I, was, you know, I know that's thought, that's what yeah. we're talking about. I wanted like to a do true the, pro. Like the facial expression. Yeah. You're like, she's going to belt some out. Yep. I was, but except for my voice is horrible. Bar- Bar- All right, Barton. Hi. Welcome. Barton. Hi there. Oh, my God. I'm so excited you're here. Me too. I am. Also. All right. Yes. So, Phil. Yes. Yes. Welcome again. Yes. As one always. Week, one week. One week. One week. I know. And we've been knocking it out. I, uh, well, as long as we're not knocking boots. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask about that later. 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 You can ask about it on the podcast. So, <laughs> welcome, Barton. Thank I you. wanted to... Um, have you on for a few weeks because I think that you and I, I don't know, we have something, mm-hmm. something happening and, and you, you make Absolutely. magic when we're, when you're talking. Um, I'm going to dive right in because I wanted to really quick circle back to what happened yesterday. Okay. So yesterday. In the kitchen or in the kitchen. Where? Oh, the um, kitchen. The kitchen. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Kitchen. <laughs> yesterday in our kitchen at Keller Street Co-work, 140 Keller Street. <laughs> He's always yeah, prompting well, me like, where are where, we? Where, where is it? <laughs> yes. Oh, gotcha. Oh, we're, um, but we're in a different room again, right? We are. We're yeah. in the big conference room with the, the windows room? because last time we did this with Dan Quinones and um, normally we're in the small conference room and, <laughs> and nobody can see us. <laughs> and he took his clothes off. And, so you're like, yeah. <laughs> to keep guests from taking their clothes off, we'll go with the one with the big windows. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, pants are required in this room. Of, yes, pants are required. <laughs> all of the members have been talking all week about how fun it was to watch us sit oh. here and talk and drink wine and sure, all sure. the stuff that we do. So yeah, oh, we decided to try it again. Damn. So yesterday, Phil, I have to tell you this. Um, tell me. We were in the kitchen. I think Barton was probably trying to have lunch and mm-hmm. I interrupted. Mm-hmm. I was having a conversation with Michael Woolsey, who's a local Petaluma photographer. And, and awesome gentleman. Um, super awesome. And then Brian Rigney from Rigney Plumbing, who's in, in one of our offices, came in. And mm-hmm. anyway, it turned into this conversation. What? Is like an hour, maybe? It, yeah. Of it, all of these yeah. Petaluma dudes who remember all the shit about Petaluma from like 100 years ago. Petaluma old basically. school. Basically. Yeah. So oh, yeah, I yeah. Was arm wrestlers. Fascinated. Very much so, yeah. I was sitting there and, I, and, and one guy would be like, Oh my gosh, do you remember this? And the other yeah. one's like, Oh yeah, and this so and so owns this and they sold it and then this guy died and I mean like Wait, what? Who they, died? Literally? Yes. Yeah. Been property and died. I, the whole time I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm new pedal. No, everything. I'm like fifteen years. We so. have to have yeah, them all here. on the podcast. Like one day this it has to be kind of a little bit of a departure from what we normally do. And yeah. I just all I want are all the dudes Wait, just, who have I, I been gotta, here forever. I gotta interrupt to just talk for a second. Yeah, it was what we second. normally do, this the name of the show is unusual. Right, business yes. as unusual. Oh, right, mm-hmm. right, unusual. So, right. I, it might, so there is it, no. It, it might as actually <laughs> break in format. Might be. <laughs> so is, are you referring to the business or the unusual right. part? Then, right, both. Uh, yes. Gotcha. So anyway, Sorry. it was fun. I think yeah. that at some point I would love to have you back on. And that was a gas. Like yeah. Brian and maybe even Larry. I mean, there's so many of you yeah. who have been in Petaluma for so long and know so much about what's been going on here. It's pretty impressive. And and that's a fun. that's a little bit of, of a misnomer too. Is, I mean, I've only been here for about 15 years. Right. Which but you um, seem but, to know everything about everybody. That's because I'm blessed. I'm lucky. I found that when I drove into Petaluma. No, I think very, what it means is you get around, man. <laughs> <laughs> We were trying to downplay that part. Thanks, Phil. All no, right. around town. Like, Phil's you meet mic. a lot of people. Of yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in the nature of my business, uh, that certainly has to happen. But when I drove into town, um, I, I literally, I'm, I'm in my Ford F-250, got my horse trailer behind me. I'm coming up the Boulevard South. I passed the bu- uh, pash. I passed. Yeah, the bar- I passed and stopped in the Buckhorn. <laughs> um, and I, I really, I passed the Buckhorn, and I'm coming into downtown. I'm like, I'm home. I Home. Really? That was the you first. It was like eleven that? o'clock at night. First time I drove into Petaluma. We're moving to it. My wife grew up here, you uh-huh. know, so I've been coming for twenty five some years. But until I finally drove into town, like with that that sensation, mm-hmm. I mean, it really struck me. This is my hometown. This is mm-hmm. this is it. So you came home. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, very much. I don't so. think I've. I mean, I've lived in many, many places, and I don't think I ever felt at home when I first showed up. Well, we'll fix you. Yeah. I, oh, there you, know, you go. You know. I mean, no, that's possible. funny you mentioned that yeah. about Petaluma too, because um, I bought my first home ever in Petaluma, mm-hmm. and compared to like when I was, I guess like a child, there really hadn't been a home. I hadn't had that feeling of being home until mm-hmm. until then. Right here. Right. Yeah. Well, I do feel like it's at home. I'm at home now. I think I feel that way. Since you don't I've have to. You don't no, have I to. I do. I do. Well, don't you hate Petaluma? Because... <laughs> no, I never said that. I didn't say you said that. <laughs> he didn't. Hey, actually, Petaluma! But... I never said that. I mm-hmm. promise. I never said that. I do. Um, I feel more at home now, though, since Keller Street has been opened. Because I would think, yeah, I didn't have a really close community of people that I hung out with or yeah. or that I worked with, even so. Now I do definitely feel like I'm a part of the fabric of yeah. this town. You've mentioned that a couple of times where, you know, prior to this position, you knew, oh, you know, a very few number of people, but mm-hmm. there's such an amazingly diverse group of people here at Keller I Street know, Cowork right? that you just like, you're instantly integrated because you talked about layers too. You mentioned the fact that, okay, she knows 12 people from Keller Street Cowork, right? But now all of a sudden there's 12 groups right. that she knows because now networks, she's going out right? and hanging out with people yeah. and, you know, so it's just like this, you know, is it one person tells one person, all of a sudden there's mm-hmm. hundreds of people that know that I Danielle know. is in town. Danielle's I in mean, town, I've yeah. I've done some things you that right I hadn't in. done. Like Barton, you took me mm-hmm. to Lagunitas to listen to mm-hmm. some music one, so one afternoon or evening. Yeah. That was fun. I had never been. I'd lived here seven years and never been to Lagunitas. Yeah, I, I hadn't Great been to venue. Lagunitas um, until like three months ago. And especially to listen and to I lived music. down the street. That's and embarrassing. You I, know, stop now, I know. I know. Actually, I know. that's when I discovered. Remember we talked Married about Royal Jelly Jive a couple weeks yeah. ago with Buka? Oh, yeah. That's how I discovered them. Barton took mm-hmm. me and he's like, you have to listen to these people. They're amazing. Oh, Lagunitas. Yes. No, Royal Jelly Jive. Sorry, she switched gears. Oh, Wait, you totally. Were you not listening? No, I thought I was putting two, it because you Royal said that Jelly you guys Dive. went to see music <laughs> yes. at Lagunitas. Yes. Right. Royal Jelly Dive. At Lagunitas. At Lagunitas. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I thought. Can we say yeah. Lagunitas? Lagunitas. No. Lagunitas. <laughs> Hola, Lagunitas. <laughs> bueno, oh, you should see uh, Daniel's uh, eyes, everybody. Uh, <laughs> my eyes just rolled Laguna. into the back of my head. <laughs> right, exactly. She has a thing for accents and <laughs> yeah. you know, a foreign bit. language speakers. I don't yeah. know what it is. We so all whatever, have that little whatever. bit. Yeah. So you mentioned Australians. Is that a thing for you? Well, um, yeah, certainly. Oh, Absolutely, wow. yeah. Do you, sure. do you run the Australian Siri? I do. What? Yeah. I do. Really? <laughs> I do. I'm not. Did actually, you know there's a setting? You can go I to just Syrian. Changed it she, to the South African guy, but yeah. it was Australian. For oh, okay, okay. Until somebody told me a story about how, and I'm sorry for any Australian folk who are in Petaluma listening, because I don't know if this is true, but somebody did tell me that Australian men tend not to treat their women very well. Okay, so gross generalization. Uh, that could be yes, a thing. Yeah, I know. Right. But we're going to okay. go with it. At least you don't paint with a broad brush. <laughs> right. right. But no, but somebody told you that. You, I, that's not, that's not been your experience, that, right? right? No, because I don't. Well, I know a few Australians, but I didn't. Anyway, that's a different story. Okay. So you know what we need to do? We need to, we need to um, gross generalization. back up just really quick. Okay. No, to, yeah. to accents and Australians, right? Because yes. we love them both. <clears throat> Yes. So here I'm going to give you once again. Here we go, my Spanish speaking Australian. Oh my god! Oh nice! <laughs> this is a treat. Here we go. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ready? I'm gonna no hold pressure. on. Let me turn my headphones no on. No pressure. Yeah, first, well, let me have a sip of my wine first. <laughs> Buenas tardes y bienvenidos. Mi nombre es Brett Taylor. Buen día. <laughs> I love it. If I knew more Spanish, I could keep going, but... <laughs> Wait, nice. who's Brett Taylor? Uh, uh, that's a great que- that, I yeah. love that question. Brett Taylor, nice. is, a, is, is he was the MC horseback rider of the Wild West show at Universal Studios, and I played that role for 10 years, oh, no riding way. a horse professionally for hey. Universal Studios. It was awesome. Do oh, you, do you no kidding. actually rode a horse? Yeah, yeah, yeah like rode a horse in the live show. One of those show shows that you show up at, and they're like, at 3 o'clock, it'll mm-hmm. be this show. And oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You get, a, you get a Ruger 44. You get to push nice. buttons that blow up pyrotechnic devices. You go out on stage. You fight. You ride a horse on and stage. The show, and the show, how many shows yeah. a day? Um, so it varied four to six. Usually. Nice. Yeah. So paid great. Hung out between uh, shows and played cards. And I rode a horse professionally. Was paid for it for more than 10 <laughs> okay, years of my life. Okay, so I, totally I, again, setting the bar fairly I'm high. I'm shocked. It's amazing. Barton is one of those people who, like, he'll come in and be like, oh, I did that once. And you're like, oh, yeah, of course you did. Because there is nothing that you haven't done or <laughs> so tried or said. So what was the horse's <laughs> name? <laughs> well, Black Bart, coincidentally, was probably <laughs> okay. my all-time favorite horse. Right, because... Um, there's Frank James, who was the 
fastest little sucker. Nice. And it's a very limited space. There's right. Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp, he would live, he, he was a Palomino paint. He was at least 16, if not higher, hands. Hands. H- hands. Yep. Hands. hands. Do you know about the hands? I do. Okay, okay good. Perfect. But, but Wyatt Earp, this is Honest God's Truth, he would literally come on stage with um, my lead guy, right? One of the guys that wrangled the, the horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wrangler, wrangled the horses for the Cooper Mount, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but, okay. but Wyatt literally glanced over at him, saw that he wasn't looking, glanced forward to the audience, leaned to one side, and lifted his him. hoof up, stepped on his toe, and then leaned back over and put his toe. And that was Pat Milicano. He stepped on Pat Milicano, Milicano's Pat, foot if you're listening. intentionally. Intentionally. intentionally absolutely oh God, that's a smart horse oh he was full that's of it, man awesome yeah he knew it was happening oh, and he oh also knows gosh. the horses know that you can't discipline them so to speak and it's not like we were like wailing on the horse or bunching right. the horse but they can't you can't really discipline them unless you're really good at, out in, in front, front of the, of the audience yeah. exactly yeah 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 uh, so what do they like to do in front of the audience well they like they to be bis- misbehave do they bite they like to sometimes they yeah, yeah yeah so they, they also like to poop and pee <laughs> right on stage as soon as you bring them out <laughs> so awesome yeah Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> and you were packing the so, whole time. Uh, yeah. Have packing 40, heat. 44 yeah. Ruger. Come on. Oh, my God. So yeah. you have to change your Siri then to an Australian woman. I actually, uh, yes. Thank you. I actually I actually have the, the English Siri. Mm. Oh, you do? Ah. Delicious. So back to my, yeah. So You're, I heard about the Australian. South, South the gross, African. The gross overgeneralization yeah. mm-hmm. of the Australians. Oh. So I did switch my Siri to the South African man. Okay. Is that Dutch South African or English South African? Is there a Dutch? There's a, I don't know. This is the, where education Anything? comes in. Right. right. So it depends on where you went to high school, what you studied. I didn't go to high school in Petaluma, which obviously <laughs> taught you that there's two. Actually, either did I, but Petaluma <laughs> did teach me because I have two sets of neighbors that are South African and come to find out. And what? I was wondering, I mean, if I was from South Africa and I ended up living houses away from somebody from South Africa, I would. That would be weird. Yeah, but I'd be like party in south african right yeah and you know dropping the africans and all that but apparently one one family's dutch and the other's english oh yeah so they don't really they don't hang out much but it's does, a thing. does either really have a right to south africa Is that right i mean and that's the like, greater greater yeah. point was yeah. south africa was colonized right. by the english and then control had passed back and forth between the english and the dutch throughout the 1800s right Mm, yeah, so right. they're just right. both full of it then. <laughs> <laughs> right. I totally knew all that. You know? Hmm. Huh. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, English colony, Dutch to colony. Say, so yeah. were, were their accents different? I, f- I can't tell the difference. Yeah. Okay. They all got African. Maybe, maybe they that's speak why Africans and they maybe have the that's accent. that's why it's so, so crazy. The accent's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. different. Yeah, it is. For sure. Completely. It's not it. Dutch. It's I not English. It's a little bit sexy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Well, okay, that's the third accent you've said that for. So I'm, I'm totally going to come up with <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, wait a minute. I have what, an, what I have an American accent. <laughs> I know. You know what's Petaluma funny accent? is I actually <laughs> sound. <laughs> <laughs> she damn, come on. Tell mm-hmm. me what a Petaluma, like, let's see. Who <laughs> do you know that grew up here? Who, who do, do I know? Who do you know that grew up here that is from Petaluma? Larry. Yeah, Larry Sartori. He yeah. has no accent. Correct. Yeah. Who yeah. said there's I, a peddling I, 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 accent? I, I mean, to you and I, he doesn't have an accent, but to right. somebody from South Africa, there you go. Yeah. Accent, he totally you know? has an accent. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. God, I love this. Yeah. We should have a geography lesson in every one of these podcasts. Or not. Yeah. How about we talk about Barton for, yes. for a moment? Sure. Why not? So, among many things, mm-hmm. one thing that he is, he has a radio show here locally in Petaluma, The Greater Good, right? The Greater Good. Right. Yeah. And I was actually lucky enough to be on the show. However, I never did actually hear yeah. how it went because I was going to get a recording of it and it didn't never show up. It's self oh, it, it was that good. It was that it good. It didn't never show it up. It didn't never show up. <laughs> now, that's a Petaluma accent. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right there. There it is. <laughs> <Yeehaw>. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a copy of it now. Well, at least I have to go through because they sent me all the backlog files. Oh. So I, I think I've got it now. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Nice. I'm looking forward to hearing all right. it. So The Greater Good. The Greater Good. The greater, tell us about it. Oh, very cool. All right. So The Greater Good um, was a little bit of a brainchild about um, having folks uh, that impact our community uh, come on and talk about uh, what it is that they do on a daily basis to spread the greater good uh, throughout our, our neighborhoods and community. So I had Petaluma Pete. 
who plays our piano oh, downtown. I love him. Yeah, so much fun. Um, that was really great to have him. And, and just talking about how he got started, you know, and why he does what he does and, and what the history is. And I'm, and I'm an East Sider so. band, Petaluma Pete. <clears throat> oh, yeah, the piano player downtown. Piano player, so where's his piano? Well, it's, it's, it's his area called downtown Petaluma. I built in the mid 1800s. Yes, I'm I, you aware know what? There's that. a really great co working space downtown, too, just in case you want to. Where is it? Keller Street? <laughs> Keller Street. That's Keller Street co Yeah. Oh, oh, the one on 140. 